That over there is a separate building. On the ground floor is just an unconditioned workshop. Above it is a space that's been converted into living space. Most people call that a bonus room, but effectively the way it was built is exactly the same as a finished attic that you might have at the top of your home. So now we're inside the bonus room that we looked at from outside. You see, it looks much like a finished attic if you've ever been in a finished attic or if you have one in your own home. Now, I'm gonna point out the different elements because that's confusing for a lot of people and it's really important to know the right terminology to use if you're trying to talk about it. So, these here, this and this, these are called the roof rafters or the slopes. From the other side of this drywall is the actual roof rafters that are holding up the roof. So there's only a space, maybe six, eight inches wide, as thick as those roof rafters. These definitely should be insulated. This here and the other side, these are called knee walls. Typically, they're called knee walls because roughly speaking, they're knee height. Now on the back side of this knee wall also should be insulated and there is a cavity that we'll look at momentarily um, that's an unconditioned space called the outer ceiling joists. Up here, this piece of wood is, defines the collar beam. Essentially, in this space, there really isn't a collar beam, but in some, something like this, could be, could go the full length of the whole space. And that's the color beam then. And that's also an area that should be insulated and air sealed. That wall at that end, and the one you can't see behind the camera, that's called a gable end wall. You consider that wall the same as any exterior wall, the way it should be insulated. Or if you're sending me information about modeling your house, that should just be considered a wall not anything else. These parts all are defined in the section called finished attics. But that is just a wall. It's, it's dealt with in the wall section, same as any other exterior wall. So when you're collecting the information about the dimensions of the different elements in here, this is how you want to do it. The knee wall, you measure from the ground to the end of the knee wall, right here. This one's about 42 inches. And then you me measure the length from that wall, that gable end wall, to this gable end wall. And you can add those measurements together for the two knee walls. Most times, both knee walls, both roof rafters will be exactly the same. So combining those numbers as one is okay. The slope, the roof rafter, is similar. You measure it from the edge of the collar beam to there. This is about 84 inches. And again, then you measure the distance from the gable to the gable, which will be the same as the knee wall in most cases. To measure the collar beam, even though there's a very small collar beam in this case, to measure the collar beam, you just measure here. This is just three and a half inches wide from edge to edge. Okay, your finished attic or your bonus room might have a hatch in the knee wall as an access for you to get behind and see what's going on or to add insulation. This one doesn't and it doesn't need it because from underneath in that workshop, we can access behind and have a look at what's going on behind the knee wall. So let's go now and go have a look. So here we are behind the knee wall. This is that knee wall of the bonus room, of the finished attic, the back side of it. The fact that I see this material here tells me pretty much for sure that these walls are insulated. So really, I wouldn't do anything with this. But just for the sake of you guys and to show you what this looks like, I'm going to slice this and I'll fix it later.
that's probably enough to show you. So these are the stud cavities. These are two by four studs that make up the wall of that knee wall. And each one is packed very well with bat insulation. R13 is what fits into that space. You can see no gaps, nothing is squished. It's really well done insulation here. Up above for the roof rafter area, this is insulated also. If you measure it, you'll see it's five and a half inches, which is equivalent to a two by six. It's what we call a two by six. So this would be R19. That's what fits into a two by six space. We already saw from inside the finished attic, what's called the knee walls and the roof rafters or slopes and the collar beam. The fourth element that's present in most finished attics is called the outer ceiling joists. These joists are the ceiling joists and they're the outer ceiling joists because they're the outer part of this finished attic. In most cases, it won't be floored like this. What you'll have instead is drywall attached here, which forms the ceiling of the room below it. And you want to measure this way. You want to measure from the edge of the roof to here. That's your measurement for the outer ceiling joists. If you did have a typical finished attic, like I said, there would be drywall attached here that is the ceiling of the room below it. The insulation, if you had any up here, would be sitting at that drywall level upwards this way. So you want to measure it from the drywall from this point here up and find out how many inches of insulation you have. 